Question 4 asks us to find the slope and the x and y intercepts of each of the lines if they exist. These things might not always exist. For a line like 3x minus 2y equals negative 9, we can find the x and y intercepts by plugging in either 0 for x or 0 for y. So to find the y-intercept, that occurs when x equals 0. And so if I plug in 0 for x and then solve for y, uh, 3 times 0, of course, is 0. So we're left with negative 2y equals negative 9, which means you know, dividing both sides by negative 2, we get that y equals 9 over 2, positive 9 over 2, or as a decimal, 4.5. The y-intercept is actually the ordered pair that has 0 as its x-coordinate and 9 over 2, or 4.5, as its y-coordinate. Again, working with this same line, if I plug in 0 for y, I'll be able to find the x-intercept. Doing that, I get 3x minus 2 times 0, so that's going to make that term disappear, equals negative 9. 3x equals negative 9. Dividing both sides by 3 means that the x value of the x-intercept is negative 3. Negative 9 divided by positive 3. But the way to fully express that is with negative 3 as an x-coordinate and 0 as a y-coordinate. So those are both the x and y-intercepts of the first equation. For the second one, we kind of get the y-intercept for free. The y-intercept, the y-value of the y-intercept is 3 halves. So we get uh, a y-intercept of 0, 3 halves. We can see that from the equation. If I plug in 0 for x, that first fraction, uh, 0 divided by negative 3, uh, is 0, so it goes away, and y has to equal 3 halves. The x-intercept is a little more of a challenge. Uh, but we can do it in the same way that we, we can find it, in the same way that we found the x-intercept of the first equation. If I plug in 0 for y and solve for x. So I can subtract 3 halves to the other side. I can subtract 3 halves from both sides. And then multiply the whole equation by 3, uh, by negative 3 rather to cancel the negative 3 that's multiplied by x. So negative 3 times x divided by negative 3, this is just going to be x. Multiplying negative 3 on the other side, I get negative 3 over 2 times negative 3 over 1, and so we get a positive 9 halves. This is the x value of the x-intercept, so the actual x-intercept, it's going to be 9 halves comma 0. Finally, for the last equation here in terms of intercepts, x equals negative 2 is a special sort of line. It's a vertical line at negative 2. So it has no y-intercepts because the y-axis is also a vertical line. So these two are parallel and they're never going to intersect. But of course it does intersect the x-axis, so it has an x-intercept of negative 2 comma 0, but it has no y-intercept. Again, because the y-axis is a vertical line as well, and so that line x equals negative 2 will never cross it. The second part of the question, of course, involves slope. I ask you to find, or I guess I should say maybe the first part of the question involves slope. So we just found the x and y-intercepts, except for the last one where we don't have a y-intercept. The slope for this last one is also kind of weird. It's undefined. Um, so it's kind of the special case where uh, when we talk about slope, we're talking about the rate of change as we move from left to right. But a vertical line has no left and right. I can't move left and right along that line. Um, so it kind of falls apart and we don't get a slope. Here, uh, the line that we're given is y equals negative x over 3 plus 3 halves. That is essentially in slope-intercept form, 
it's equivalent to saying y equals negative one-third x plus three halves. And so the slope, the actual number that we can attach to the slope for that middle equation is negative one-third. The one comes from the fact that a variable that has no number in front of it, I could place a one in front of that. So one times x divided by three divided by negative three is the same as negative one divided by three times x. And so negative one-third is the appropriate slope. For the first equation, it helps to put it into slope-intercept form to try to find the slope. I can uh, subtract 3x from both sides and then divide everything by negative 2. And so the slope, again, you know, kind of in a similar way, it's going to come from the negative 3 divided by negative 2. And so the slope for this line, it's going to be positive 3 halves because the negative values cancel. We can see from slope-intercept form again that the y-intercept should be positive 9 over 2 because of the y-intercept in slope-intercept form. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.